We're all in attendance. Are we on, DJ? We're on. All right. Let's, let's see if we stay on. Let's call the regular monthly board meeting River Water District to order at 731 on March 28, 2016. All board members present. Um, first item on the agenda is public comments. No public in attendance, so we move on to the next item, which is tab one minutes from February 22nd meeting. Comments? I move we approve the minutes of February 22nd. Second. Moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of February 22nd. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, are we caught? Are we up to date on all the minutes? Is okay. there one that we we're missing? Good. All right, so that's oh, good. I stained since I wasn't here. All right, um, now we have tab two electrical generator project schedule and <coughs> contract update. So, we don't usually see a schedule. I'm trying to figure out why we do, but I, I had some comments on the contract. Yeah, that's I just kind of put this in about. as. Okay. As a something to talk about filler. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's just it's still tentative because we did have a pre-construction meeting. So go ahead. Well, so our contract that that MSA, you know, I re review contracts frequently, and from an insurance and indemnity perspective, two things concern me with that contract. Um, number one we require the contractor to indemnify us for anything arising out of the project, which is commonplace, and for our own negligence, which is expressly prohibited by ORS 30.140. You can't, there's an anti-indemnity statute that says you can't in, require somebody to indemnify you for your own negligence. So that would mean we did something wrong and we're making them pay for it because we have a contract with them which is you know against public policy. So I think we need to fix that in our contract. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's important in the contract is there's no requirement for insurance. And most contractors, they happen to be a client of our firm, <coughs> um, when you have a blanket additional insurance endorsement, it says that every people you enter into contract with are automatically an additional insured, but only if required to be so by contract. So we're not requiring by contract that they name us as an additional insurer. So if they have a blanket additional insured endorsement, they can't make us an additional insured unless they agree to. So the other thing, just as a matter of policy, we got a certificate of insurance from them. We didn't get an additional insured endorsement. So a certificate is just a piece of paper that says that the date they issued it, they had insurance. The additional insured endorsement to the policy mm -hmm. actually grants us rights under their policy. I thought what I sent you was it was just a certificate. Didn't have the additional insurance endorsement attached. Down below? That's not a that's okay, not an that's endorsement. Right. That's okay. just a comment on the certificate. You need the actual endorsement from the policy. Mm. So a copy of their endorsement from the policy. So we have some contracting things to fix, I think. And I think we should talk to Jim about so the contract form was was recommended by MSA and it's just not a good contract. So we need to fix the contract. And then we need to so it needs to should you have a clean up the indemnity the and we insurance need to, policy in addition to the endorsement no because who's going to read it i mean frankly I, I i'm we could we could ask for that it's not common to do that i guess what, what is common is that you request a copy of the additional insured endorsement the policies are generally standardized but not every one of them I mean, there, there's some differences. They're usually ISO insurance services offices. They're standard policy form. So you, you should sort of know what the policy is, but it's not common to ask for policy. You could. And you know, for our work, I don't know that I would recommend it. If we were building something complex and unique and different, we might want to get a little more specific on looking for their policy, but we don't. Um, emergency generation isn't all that complex. But we have some contracting issues, I think. So I, so I guess um, I'm happy to talk to Jim as a representative of the board, if, because since I deal with this kind of stuff, if you guys want me to do that and ask him to fix that contract. Makes sense to me. I'd like yeah. to have a copy of the policy as well as the endorsement. What are we going to do with it? You can review it and see if there's anything that uh, you want to... 
want to uh, check on. Uh, I mean, I guess we could ask for that, but on an eighty-eight thousand dollar contract, it's very uncommon. And the contractor might. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's all, everything exists electronically now. It's just emailed to us. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's uncommon. But I would definitely recommend. I mean, if we don't require by contract that they have insurance and name us as additional insured, probably we're not covered. And we we'll find out if technically we aren't. Right. Well, and I think insurance companies lead the league in technical interpretations. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would money. think yep. that so. if you're, the attorney would say, if you want a copy of that endorsement, then you should have a copy of what it's attached to, and that's why you ask for the policy. I deal with attorneys every day, and that's not really what I hear from them. But um, yeah, I, I would take your advice on this one. Yeah. But, but again, if you really want policy, we can we can ask for it. It just doesn't. It's uncommon. Yeah, well, I do. The thing is, is just like we just got the SDIS, the new revised, you know, um, policy for 2016 because they made a bunch of changes. They changed to Lloyd's of London and a few other things. Yep. You know, reading that, I'm not an expert on on the whole I mean they sent out a thick thing like this and everything and I was really reliant upon our agent what in I order would, to give yeah, me a, a what I would be worried about is tacit approval which uh, talk to lawyers about tacit approval if we ask for something and we look at it that is it assumes that we've approved it now you can't possibly require in a contract every single thing that's in the insurance policy or isn't in the insurance policy. It's not practical to do so. So you require standard, you know, type of coverage with a few things that apply to your specific project. And then you ask them to back up those things that are being required. So, because I think if you see the policy, that's tacit approval that this is good for us. But if you don't have the technical competency to review it, there might be some things that you don't like in there. But if you've received it and haven't made exception to it, then I think it's tacit approval, or could be construed that way. Or in my road, it's called implied approval. Implied approval. Yeah, so I see what you're saying. I'd rather not ask for it, because that makes them think we're OK with it, or, or that we've reviewed it. That implies that we've reviewed it and approved it. Yeah, because you don't get it just to stick it in your pocket and walk no. away. And we don't have the technical competency to DJ's mm -hmm. point to review it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should. I think we should ask for additional insurance endorsement, which we can review. That's one piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it is fairly standardized. Anyway, that, I, that's the only thing I, I had to say about it. I don't know if there's anything to talk about on the schedule itself. But it looks like. No, the only thing that has become a issue is what I wrote in my report about um, this contractor that we got it feels that uh, it wasn't specified that they were going to have to put a new conduit from our transfer station to our pump station up at number three which meant uh, digging into the new asphalt and redoing that so He's asked the MSA for a change order. Not yet. He's asked requests for information on where they felt it was put in there. And um, according to Jim, they're, they're going to stick to their guns. Cause, but he didn't say it was specifically said you're going to put a new line from here to there. It was listed in the conduit, you know, the materials and some other things, and so um, I don't know what's going to happen on that. He asked for, they, they said they would give him comments back in a week, and the thing that, that you know, I said is that the, uh, the two companies that came up and saw the site, they all measured for that, and knew they were going to be doing that so I don't know how the contractor missed it or whatever but you know that was what was 
Well, maybe a change order in some form. I don't what know. What was the next closest bid? 94,000. They're all pretty close, weren't they? About 5,000. But why would you want to go with this party if they misconstrued the... And the question, of course, is did they misconstrue if two other parties who all read the specs presume that they would be doing that, but this party who was the lowest didn't assume that that action would be needed. That's well, that's the bid that we. Yeah, that's the well, bid. Well, they were the lowest response bidder, so we awarded the bid to them. That's. Well, that's, but. but Responsive is the question, and we, we were told by our engineer that they were responsive. We didn't review their their proposal in detail, I don't think. So no, I don't think we were, so. They were recommended by our engineer who said they were lowest responsive bidder, and we approved it. So, but um, now is the question is, who's going to pay for it if that if the lowest bidder? Well, it Murray Smith's they uh, they have liability, don't they? Does Murray Smith have liability? I don't know. They have uh, said that they're not. It's not going to change the contract. That's what they tell me. But you know, y well, the first step out, you're dealing with a contractor who's unhappy, which doesn't yeah, make no, my day. Yeah. You know. Should we ask our attorney about that? I don't think we're at a point where we're the attorneys involved because this gets expensive. Well, we, need think a, <coughs> we need to take a look at the bit or the project proposal and make sure. Well, no, I, I don't think we do personally. We're the board. We need to stay at an arm's length. We right. need to push our engineer to do his job and to tell us whether or not it was in the spec. If there's an RFI, request for information out. They're going to review it and to tell them whether or not it was in the spec. If they say it was in the spec, here it is. The other guy saw it. Sorry, you missed it. But Tough if a, a board member wanted a copy of the RFP, why wouldn't they have the we, have Yeah, it? I'm not saying we're, we're restricted from looking at it, but I don't think we as a board should engage in something we're not well, technically qualified Well, that's your own opinion. That doesn't do. mean others. No, I think that's my opinion. opinion. Sure. No, what, what does the board think? Uh, we're well, technically yeah. qualified to review. No, I, have I, have not. Not. I have I would not. like to see it. <laughs> I have extra copy. I mean, I don't want to get into the weeds. Exactly. However... I wouldn't mind re personally reviewing it myself. I probably will not understand most of what's in there, but then to go through and to verify the words conduit from here to here, so we have talked about it. But again, it's on, up to the con our engineering firm to deal with the issue. It is, and we're talking about you know maybe five grand worth of work. Yeah. Um, we could make five grand worth of trouble and not get any more. Yeah, we sure could. So I think we should let Mary Smith do their job, work with the contractor, and get this resolved. That's. I don't disagree with that because uh, I mean if, if this is, is the, if this is a, a problem you have, and I don't think you have, but with this engineer, then it's time to talk about that as opposed to this project. We've had other problems with this engineer in the past, so yeah, maybe that's the maybe that's the thing we should be paying attention to here. But um, again, it goes back to we had two contractors up there who were doing the bid who measured it out. Yep. So well, they, they were directed to do so by the by the engineer, and he failed to direct the other one, or they read the spec and it's in there. Well, you know, I'm not sure what. But again, I'd rather let you know, the process play itself out there. In my, my opinion. Okay, this is my opinion. After looking at this, I'd rather just see the page where it says it. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Happy digging. Um, <clears throat> okay, any other comments on that? I guess we can circle back to that after if people want to look, review it on their own time and have comments on it. Um, I'm satisfied well, I with guess what we're everybody else's. Yeah. Do you need a, a motion to... Authorize me to yeah. talk to Jim? I don't think we need a motion. I think we let him do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to you. I, it's not yeah, a big okay deal with to, that. to fix a contract. I, okay, again, I that's fine. Make with recommendations me. like that all the time. Personally, my clients, so. because you know that law you referred to, I didn't. You know, I didn't know what that. You know, 
shouldn't be in there yeah, and yeah, illegal. Yeah, and and they probably just, you know, copy and paste, you know, and and mm -hmm. have been using it. And, yeah. so and nobody used else to be has legal. called them on. They used to be legal in Oregon, and it's not legal anymore because there's, you know, or some adverse case law around it. They had to clean up the statute. I think mean, it makes sense. You just can't really ask somebody to indemnify you for your own screw-ups. No. It's not really fair. Maybe that's a nice world. On to yeah. SDA, yeah. Yeah. just under best practice. Information. All right, let's get to the employee handbook. If we're done with section two, I'll call Jim and help him um, talk to him about it. Um, how do we want to do this? Do we want to go through the entire document? I got to be out of here at 9 30 or 9, nine o'clock. I'm sorry, I got to have nine. I can't go any later than that, also. Yeah, I have a nine o'clock. I'm, uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. I don't have any comments. Me too. I think they yeah, I think they've really, you guys have really beaten the the thing into shape. There's a couple minor things that I saw that could be cleaned up. So, so extra punctuation. Well, yeah. I think <laughs> she. It's when you do a track changes, it's yeah. kind of hard to get all the spaces and yeah. punctuation marks. She said basically um, that she was going to reformat and put it in everything, that this was just basically the the body of what you guys went yeah. through and yeah. the changes that were requested. I thought it was written really well and very clearly. Um, I did have a couple questions though. Um, I mean, I, do we want to go through just, just some corrections? Some minor guys. So, for page four, under at will employment. Sentence. Um, this would be a your employee at any time and for any lawful reason, with or without notice, subject to any due process requirements related to that may be required by. I think we should either related to or that may, one or the other, not both. I think we'll probably cross out related to. Yeah, that would be my preference. Yeah. Due process requirements that may be required by law. Either related that, to or that, um, one, and I think it should be that may be required. So that related, related to, to, yeah. Okay. Page six. I this was I remember talking about this one before. The third bullet up from the bottom eliminated all forms of rule discrimination. Blah blah blah. Support coworkers if they are in difficulty. And I guess it's just an employee handbook, so maybe it's not that. But I don't know what in difficulty means. But yeah. I mean, I'm in difficulty every day. And I'd love support of a colleague if I can get it, but <laughs> so I don't really know what that means. But I don't know that it's, that it's something. This, to this code of ethics came from Clackamas County. Yeah. Did you know that, John? No, I didn't. Yes. I haven't looked at the handbook for a while. I think we'll probably just leave it there. It just was a little bit of a head scratch. What is in the difficulty? If they're in difficulty. Um, you said the third bullet up? Yeah. 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 You well, they are in difficulty, difficulty because of responsible efforts to correct such dim discrimination, fraud, mismanagement, or abuse. Yeah, okay, so they're correct. They saw an embezzlement and they decide to correct it and the embezzler pulls a gun on him in the parking lot. Is that, I guess that's in difficulty. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I'm not sure what that's, I just, I don't really yeah. think it matters. I think in context we can figure out, well, we'll figure out what that means. We'll know it when we get there. <laughs> Recognize right. it when it shows up. I like your analogy. I'd say that's a difficulty if you get yes. the gun pulled on you. Yes. 
In other words, call 911. Don't try to take the gun away. <laughs> yeah, no. I hope we don't need to say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I don't remember what my code was here. So I was confused by a couple things. Are, are we giving raises on anniversary dates, or I still this is still not resolved in my mind, and this no. doesn't really clear it up. Okay. Anniversary dates or budget cycle? Because when you go to whatever that section is, page nineteen. First says wage review compensation will be reviewed by the district manager at the end of an employee's probation and annually thereafter. Mm -hmm. Okay, which could be 12 months, could be 18 months from start of employment, or, or any number in between those two, right? Because you can extend the probationary period. So that's one date, which could be confusing because it's not anniversary. Well, the annually could just mean you're doing it once a year too. It doesn't mean it's 12 months from the last thing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. To that's me, that's annually true. means once a year. Once a year. But that's not a, it. That's not just clear. So that's not clear. And then regular, yeah. full-time, part-time things, wage rates for each budget cycle. So that's their wage rates. But they're going to be reviewed at budget cycle. And then the next paragraph says merit increases are not automatic, and at the employee's anniversary date, a hire that will make recommendations. So we got these three potential dates bouncing around there. It's still not really clear. No, to me. that is not. But. And that's a lot of administrative, you know, having three different things to work with. If you could oh, yeah. coordinate them, it'd be better. But if you guys can deal with that, that's. Yeah. But I mean, if I was the manager, I wouldn't like having to three different dates to look at a person. No. It just doesn't seem no. clear. Mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, you got like to look said, at all three things. It's just when one. do you want to do yeah, it? Yeah, we got to pick one. I mean, we know Dan's concern about anniversary date because that means it pushes a raise back for him a little ways. But it's happened to me about many times over the yeah, years. Yeah, that's just life. Uh, but so if we go, if we move to anniversary dates, we got to track everybody's anniversary date. And I like the way this says, wherever that said that is that if you're hired before the fifteenth, it's the first. If you're hired after the fifteenth, it's the last of the month or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so we can resolve that. But no, a review should not necessarily be tied to a pay increase. Right. But this is compensation, page 19. This is no. about your weight. That is what we do. It's a compensation review. So again, I just, we, we've had a bunch of discussion about this, and it doesn't look like we've really resolved it, no. from what I can tell. And as I said, if it's you do the cost of living in July, anniversary date. It's really hard for you guys to need to talk more than once mm -hmm. and to get some kind of determination. Well, and I, I'm I'm always concerned about the budget, right? So mm -hmm. we budget for salaries. Mm -hmm. We might budget an increase in there. Does that mean you automatically get it or not? Right? I mean, we budget a a. Mar a, a some additional in there. It doesn't mean somebody's merit automatically right. justifies that full amount of budget and increase. They may or may not have gotten it. Right? That's right. The budget sits there. And they can't get more than what's in the budget. Right? That's they, right. Even if they've been the best employee on the planet. Because we only have so much in our in our budget. I mean, unless we can move stuff around, but... No, that's happened for me, too, and that's when I moved on to someplace else. Yeah. But, I don't know, for me, it just seems like it's cleaner to keep it at the budget, along with the budget cycle, because that's when you come talking about, because you come talking to us about increases so that we can reflect those increases in the budget. It's not like we have a huge HR budget... Um, Department Slash, to track yeah. all these dates and, and finance department to track all these dates yeah. or the software that tracks. So the, I think the employee handbook's always said anniversary date. We've just never done it. Yeah, that's true. So I we just shouldn't. That. If we stick with budget cycle, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But then we should get this stuff out of here about anniversary date, unless you want to do just a 
an annual performance review is not related to compensation. I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it should be related to merit increase, though. <laughs> so it's yeah. Performance <clears throat> review to me is tied to raises or lack thereof. And if you get a performance review and nothing happens, then that devalues the the performance review. I don't know about that. I you know, like I've been topped out for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the top yeah. of my range, I get yeah. a performance appraisal every year. It has nothing to do with with the compensation. Yeah. And that's uh, the same situation I was at at the yeah. county. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, you know, and you know, uh, an employee, you know, uh, employee appreciates an appraisal. To be quite honest, they want to know at least it's their chance to mm -hmm. also talk back to the yeah. their managers and mm -hmm. say what issues they've got too. So we'll do some planning, some mutual planning about performance yeah. improvement or performance growth, Job, or you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, training, uh, planning, all kinds of stuff. I, the be quite that, that's exactly right. I mean, the the complaint that I get about every year when I go through one is that I don't do enough training. They tell me I need to go to more. Well, after thirty five years, I've kind of said, you know. <laughs> yeah, but if there's something new, you go. Well, okay. <coughs> so I think we could have. We want a seven percent raise. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> why, but I'm not gonna so I, <laughs> I, and I'll tell you what I tell my kids. I want to fly like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> no. I say. Uh, oh, you heard that one? One hand. Yeah. 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 Right. Well. It just needs See, to be cleaned up in this oh. document. This, whatever this document says needs to be what we actually do, and I'm not so sure that it has been. That's all I'm just, and it really isn't clear to me after reading this again, after all this discussion. Mm -hmm. Morning, Dan. Morning. Sorry. I spaced the save and stop for gas, and I was like, mm, Mary Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You, you, when you listen to the minutes, you'll hear all the stuff we volunteered you to do. Sure. Just kidding. Oh, yeah, I need that report by tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, we may need to make another crack at her, talk to her about it, and just say, because to me, it's just not really, page 19 isn't really clear. If I was an employee reading this, I'd be like, so when do I get my raise? I don't get it. So I came in in the middle of that. Um, I agree with Jim. I appreciated the, the employee review. And if raises are going to be given off of merit, at least those reviews are a good time to review, you know, how, how you've been doing, what you want to work on, uh, and open the dialogue. Yeah. Well, most employers I've been involved with have a, <coughs> you know, a five point scale a couple of different categories and you know if you're a five that means you're killing it if you're a four that means you're a performer if you're a three that means you're average and if you're below three that means you're probably need to fix some things and so mm -hmm. you know in several different categories you can we can rank performance and and the thing is if, if you know if you are sitting on four years of fives in everything you do but you've never had a wage increase the employer is probably at risk. Mm -hmm. Even if you are tapped out on your wage scale, they're saying, you're saying, well, wait, you've, you've told me I'm a five. I'm a, a far above average performer, but you can't give me my money. Well, so there's two two things going on there. One, they don't know what you're doing. They're paying attention to really what you're doing. Or, yeah, they're yeah. not paying you enough. Well, and it's a bell curve, right? Mm -hmm. If you talk to people who deal with HR management, I mean, it's you want most of your employees to be threes. Because if everybody's a five, your salary expense is going up a steep curve and you better be growing really fast to be able to fund all your you know, your pay. So you want it to be mostly in the middle. You, got, you do have a, true, a few of them that are truly fours and fives and deserve some increase. But that may be how it works in the private sector, but it not in government. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're gonna I mean, the, I, I've been a five forever. I don't get a pay raise based on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so I have a question. Uh, so I know that we don't have uh, scales here. We don't so and we can't for sure say that anybody's maxed out their pay scale. Um, but one of the, so how does it work for you, Jim? Like, do you just can only get a cost of living increase all, only? And then is that, I mean, do you, do people like you look at somebody who's coming in, who's also a five, who's getting percent or whatever so, and say like yeah. well, so you know like you top out your all you're getting is cost of living 
unless the legislature adds a new step to it. And that's happened t maybe twice in the 30 years that I've been involved. So um, you, you'd start, you have to start making a decision. Do I stick this out or do I move on? But, but the difference is that <clears throat> the state has about 20,000 more employees than yeah. we do. <laughs> That's right. So right. they can put people into categories and steps, and we, we well, have three. And so the other, the other assumption, too, in the public sector is the top of scale is we're paying you because you know how to do the job, but when you start in at the bottom step, it's like, okay, we're paying you because you have skills, but you don't know the job. And the assumption is over so many years, as you start getting into the position, understanding how the job works, you're going to get paid more and more and more until you can actually do the job competently. And then at that point, you're at the top, and you're not going. To, they're yeah. concerned you're getting paid fair market. Well, and those steps are supposed to be merit increases. They're not yeah. supposed to be automatic. And I know the keyword there is supposed, supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're supposed to be merit increases. The cost of living is what's the automatic if it's in the contract. So, because I was topped out for what nine years, but I was also being paid competitively, so I couldn't really complain. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I guess all of our experiences. I work for fifty-five thousand employee company, and you know, we so we, it just doesn't really apply. It's apples and oranges. I don't. We can't really come up with salary grades or steps because. It'd be too hard to do that. Well, it, it, this, you're right. No, the, as small as this is, um, you know, the way that, that you guys have got this set up is, is a smart way to do it. Yeah. Um, because you know you can keep you can keep your employees here by doing you know going through these discussions and like it's not you know and I, and I, I wish it was that way where I was at to be yeah. quite honest. I think well, what I was saying is like we we have some ability to look what other people are paying. So if you just said okay, if we said every year. You know, not every year, but whatever. But we just had these automatic increases. Well, what if one of our position, one of our positions, could be now paying more than the equal position at City of Tiger? So does the cap? No, you know, I mean, we don't. We've never imposed caps. We don't have. I mean, what, what, the only cap is what we, the budget committee, approves. Each right. of those steps of, of, in state government is, is negotiated through the union contract. So I, I may be top down in terms of steps. It doesn't mean that the step in that there there might not be some more money added to it because the union has now said those steps mm -hmm. need to be. But that's a union contract that goes through you know every so many years or whatever. So um, it's not uh, it's not when when the union looks at that they do those types of analyses. Are are we being paid in the same range as you know other states are doing it or other government? You know, city of Portland pays a hell of a lot more than the state of Oregon. You know, for example, and it's just the way it is. Uh, county governments are way, way, f hopefully paid less than city governments are. I, I mean, it's you know, usually the other way around. Yeah, not, actually, it is. Not yeah. within my experience as a county planner, I could get made a lot more money going to the city to the cities than I could have worked huh. for the county. Well, so, it depends on the size of the city. Well, mo I, when I was in Wasco County, the city of the Dalles paid better than Wasco County did. So you know, it's. I heard the city of Portland pays more, but they don't pay your portion of the PERS. Well, more and, and more governments don't do that. And so. the state of Oregon does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it depends on if you came in just yesterday or like me. 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, okay, let's, I don't think we can, but I think, think we've covered the ground. That the we issue really is that it needs to be clear yeah. in here in terms of what the dates are, and I agree with that. Uh, yeah, the da I don't think the dates are clear. So maybe we ask her about whether we can just clear that up. Mm -hmm. Um, dates are clear. What if they work together? I mean, it's like yeah. it's the timing of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Do we have our? I think the intent isn't isn't what we're saying. We want a performance review at anniversary and a salary or a wage review at budget cycle. Is that what we're saying? That's what I thought we said. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fair, and I think that's in keeping with. What we've been doing, I mean, we, we haven't really done the performance review consistently, mm -hmm. but we have done the wage review consistently, and it's always been at budget time. Mm -hmm. So we want to continue doing what we've doing, what we've been doing. The document needs to reflect that, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't. Of course, it's not really clear. So basically, say what we're doing. Say yep. what we're doing. Yeah, don't change what we're doing, just... Don't change, change what we're doing, just this. say it. Yeah. Yeah. Clarify it. And 
do it to 27, I got a question. Okay, so I'm backing up a little bit too. Page 10, I think we talked about this. Probationary period, you have to notify them in writing when the probationary period is done. Mm -hmm. Which means every personnel file we have in there should have a, some sort of document saying the probation period is done. Mm -hmm. Did you get that from when you got here? No. So, again, say what we're doing, if we're, maybe soften this. Um, probationary period, successful completes the probationary period. Maybe uh, just. May be notified in writing or will be told verbally or something like that. Mm -hmm. we, Again, if we're not doing it, then we shouldn't say it anymore. Yeah, uh, whether we're not doing it or not, though, I think it's a good idea. So if we haven't been doing it in the past, I think we should start, start to do right. it now because, um, boy, in my experiences over the years, uh, that, that probationary thing is a real, can be real problematic. And so to protect us, yeah, we should, not we should be just putting it in writing. Well, okay, and we don't hire that many people. So no, no, but that, I mean, I don't think, you know, it just says DJ it doesn't have one in her file. Well, that was the way it was in the past. I think from here on out, mm -hmm. we need to be doing yeah, it. Yeah, here for it's probably, uh, we can fix yeah. it going forward. So more I, candidates. Yeah, I, I, I agree it's a good practice. Okay, so that's, that, that was just more of a point. Number 14, or page 14. I just have a question. So third paragraph in, middle of that paragraph, it says travel expenses will be reimbursed as stated. If required training, if required training includes non-regular work hours, compensation time at the regular rate of one and a half, or one and one and a half regular rate will be earned. Um, so if you are on a weekend, you're getting <coughs> time and a half for the entire weekend? Is this what is that what saying? So you get a 24-hour day that you wouldn't if have worked otherwise, and you get you get 36 hours of comp time for that day that you were at a conference. Is that what that means? If if for the training hours, not anything else. Well, that's not clear. I it's see what Sean's saying. Yeah, I mean that would be a hell of a lot of comp time if you go to a weekend conference which is a day you wouldn't be working anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and you're there for 24 hours because you know you come back Sunday morning or something mm -hmm. like that. The way I read this is you get 36 hours of comp time. I don't think that's the way we intended. No, I didn't read it that way. I mean, I just assumed you were talking about work hours. That was my assumption. Yeah, but it may it not says clearly if, state if that. training includes non-regular regular work, work hours, hours, I can see that, Sean. Yeah. Comp time okay. at the rate of one and a half. Yeah, I, I see your point. I guess yeah. I was just assuming. Well, that and if that's the policy, I wouldn't be sending any of my employees to. No, nobody goes to weekend conferences. Nobody goes to weekend conferences. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I mean, I go to them all the time, and it's just straight time, and yeah, you don't you're on salary, right? Yes, mm -hmm. but you can also, you know, need to. If it's only on a Saturday. Um, of a work week, you know, you don't come in on Monday. Just basically shift the week. Well, that's on. what we usually do. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, we're we're technically been told that we can't if we're not if we're on a plane going someplace, we can't get paid for that because we're not working. Well, that depends. Uh, and I just mm -hmm. that, uh, we, no I just state law is actually very clear on that. If you're traveling during your scheduled work hours on a weekend, they have to by law pay you. Uh, that's not yeah. what they're telling us. So well, you, you can go talk to your union rep about well, that. Anyway, yeah. I, I think we should clean it up. I think what we yeah. mean is that you get eight hours of comp time. You know what that means? If you go to work on Saturday, if you go to conference on a Saturday, what 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 do you get for that? Just eight hours or eight hours of well I get is if it's in the conference is only four either. hours, I only get four hours. If it's even if you're there for the whole weekend. The time that you're working is okay. yeah. that, that's what you yeah. okay. I just it's not clear to me. The time that you're working, right? Well it's just that um, you know like if you're traveling on a Sunday yeah, as long as you're traveling before well, or work. after your scheduled work hour. So if you travel, let's say from six to seven thirty in the morning, we don't have to pay you. Well, actually, no. What time was? Oh, but what time do you normally work? Seven thirty to four thirty. So if you leave after four thirty, we don't have to pay you. That's actually what the state law implies. Is if you're working during or traveling for work during your scheduled work hours on the weekend, normal, um, they have to pay you. So we just had issues with that with a bunch of people who went back to Emmitsburg complaining about not well, getting paid and flying during business hours. It's just at any rate, that to me is another one we just need to clean up. We just need to make sure that that's clear. Well, again, what we do 
if you don't want to do what we do, but it may not be what the law says, is we try to, like, just like Dan went and his started on a Sunday, well, he took Thursday off to compensate, you know, his traveling on... That's, oh, no, that's certain. totally common. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair, and I think that's yeah. the right way yeah. to do it. I just and don't think that's what this says. Yeah. So once again, we should just reflect our common practice in this policy. And yeah, this actually says get paid for it as opposed to... Compensation. Yeah. So that sentence should be cleaned up somehow. We should say... Yeah, I don't know how we say it, but we maybe explain to our attorney what we are actually doing and ask her to make that reflected. <coughs> Well, you're looking at page 27, okay. or 26, 27. I've just got a question. The, the maximum vacation at Curiel, where did, how did we come up with that number of 240 hours? I'm just curious, though, you know. For, I think that's where the dart might Because, you know, like, for example, the state of Oregon, it's 300. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious what, you know, it used to be 250, and then... I don't, I don't have a problem with this. I just wondered where it came from. It's divisible by 8. In 12. Mm-hmm. This actually came out of Lake Oswego's, I believe. It's just a month's worth of vacation. Yeah. 240? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, that would be a month. Well, uh, the accruals, in terms of being able to use it, it's not what bothers me, or, or what it, it's how much you can get paid at the end. You know, this was, I, I, there are stories, horror stories, before you started putting limits on this, where somebody would be the manager of a, of a, a PUD, for example, they'd have 5,000 hours at the end, and you'd have to pay them this huge paycheck at the end of the, at the you know. Mm-hmm. As was the case with Courage. one of the districts of... Um, Just look at our s- superintendent of our school yeah. district here, and mm-hmm. how much that guy, jeez, I still to this day can't believe him. Double dipping. He ought to be Isn't wearing a mask. Max accrual yeah. intended to just make people use it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. That, yeah but and it's but it's that's part of it it's also made it used to be people would get cured so much and then at the end when they retire they got this huge check mm-hmm. um, actually yeah. I'd like to strike that thing I don't know well sure you, know, you would yeah <laughs> I don't know how that got in there. As well, this as is it's common to have a, this type of limitation because of there's all kind. Of, one of them is the compensation at the end, but the other is to encourage people to use it. Or, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So Northwest but in our, does that. Sometimes in our situation, we can't get it used. You know. Well, the manager has the ability in most code or most of the, to to waive this in a situation mm-hmm. like that, but but only under you know real extreme circumstances. Well, you can you can be authorized to go beyond that if your manager says that, but that's got to be. Well, I, all I know is that in if, other words, you don't lose your ten hours to <coughs> take it. Or if you have it. vacation in excess of two hundred forty hours, we have that in there where we can receive pay in lieu. Or allowed to bank it, in yep. the, you know. Mm-hmm. That's common. Mm-hmm. You know, because. So if Dan wanted to go on vacation and you needed him here because of something like that, you could have the choice to, to pay him because you, you don't want him to go right now, or to say we're gonna we're not you're not gonna lose it. You know, we'll let you go in, in two weeks from now. We're just real mm-hmm. busy right now, or something like that. During budget. Yeah, you know, kind of thing or whatever. So. Um, I, and I think that flexibility is here. It's just I, I don't I don't want to strike this. There's just been too much history of this of, of, of curing it without any limitations being abused historically. There's just it's you just hear about it all the time. So can we put it up to 300? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a policy decision. I yeah, we need to have a different discussion about that. Yeah. We do. I think we do. It's a policy decision. This is about what we're current practices. Mm-hmm. And if it's not current or it has never been discussed, I think yeah. I would like to discuss that separately. But it, it, at state government, it's, it's always a negotiable thing through the union, so it's something that's contracting. So. Yeah. Um, I think we need a cap. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, we can talk about the cap. I think John's right. Let's talk about it separately if we want to have a different cap. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. 
think we need to have something in there that protects us from these long-term potentially unfunded liabilities to pay out of somebody who leaves or retires. Yeah, I don't have a, I mean, when people use it, if they can't use it, either have the option to sell back a, percent, uh, a certain number of it at, mm -hmm. at the end of the calendar year or fiscal year. Yeah, so just some kind of cap or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. So yeah. if you have a 240, but you can't does. use it, you, you can sell some of it back. You yeah. could sell back 40 hours at yeah. the county. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you use 40, you had to use 40 in order to. Nobody ever made me use 40. <laughs> well, I had so much comp time that I never yeah. took vacation. Yeah, you're supposed to. You did were you supposed get to take your vacation at the end? Yes, I did. And how much was it? I had. I had a thirteen thousand dollar check. But you should only had a max of two fifty. Yeah, but that was combined with comp time. Oh, with comp time. Yeah. yeah. They paid you for your comp time. They have yeah, to. Yeah, they have to. If you worked, they got to pay you. Yes. So how do we budget for all this stuff? <laughs> I say, seriously. Well, I mean, yeah, that we, would really blow up. That's why we budget. have our ninety day, you know, cushion that we're trying to build through our rate increases. Mm -hmm. But that's what always scares me. I mean, if some, if we obligated ourselves to pay somebody some big check mm -hmm. uh, by our employment policies and they leave, well, where does the money come from? Well, see, and that's with the comp time thing, for example, that's why you have you know, different types of classes for employees. I don't get compensated for comp time. I just get time to use. Yeah. At the end, if I don't use it, I've lost it. I don't get compensated. Um, so, you know, that that's, that's all. That's why it's important to have it in your contract yeah. in terms of what's well, I mean, it, it, well, if the we thing, put thing caps, that is, we if you look at if you look at the staff here, number one, Rick is going to use his comp time. Um, he tries to use his vacation time. Um, you don't have a huge pile sitting there, you know, of this. So, to, and I know this is supposed to be general or whatever, but to be scared of it, you know what I'm saying? And Dan has got, what, one week? And you're gonna be using a vacation? I have 80 hours. 80 hours, two weeks. And he's, you know. Yeah, it's like I said, this is a discussion we need to have. Yeah, yeah oh, well, we've, been we've been beating around the bush of comp time discussion. And we never but we just need to get it on, you know, put our, on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Put it on the agenda, out, hash it out. Yeah. Okay, but what part of comp time have we not hashed out? No, we're talking about just this. Yeah, vacation. The I vacation. Think I want me if we're t if there's another issue with comp time. I don't think we have an issue with comp no, time. No, we we, we bounced around the the um, amount you can take and how. I mean, we I think we've resolved everything we've talked about. We have yeah. talked about several aspects of comp time. So after we thinking more about this, this 240 is fine with me because it'll work here. Oh, I don't have a problem with it. I just wanted to know how we got it. Is this one That's month? how we got it. Yeah. Is this one month worth of vacation? So you can be gone for a month. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. Isn't that like one way that bigger companies work is like, you know, my dad, he has to tell his vacation time at the beginning of the year. So at least I know it's that way so that the HR could just plan that they have the coverage. But like for us, we have less employees and we're and we don't require, you know, like so much notice, but there do we want a, are you wanting us to say that we're going to be using our vacation, that we have to use it? in a given year so we don't build it or can only bank so much? Well, the whole idea of a Curo is to say that, you're, that you that you can only bank up to so much. Yeah. I mean, whether you go on vacation yeah. this year or not is is up to you, You is in my opinion. It's just that yeah. you can't go mm -hmm. beyond that. I mean, I have never, I don't I don't like the idea that you've got to plan your vacation a year ahead of time, yeah. but you've got to get it authorized by your manager. So, you know, if you come in today and you want to take off tomorrow, that's kind of short notice. DJ should say, well, I really need you here next week. You can't do that. Or, okay, no problem. You know, there's nothing going on anyways. Go for it. I would rather have the manager make that decision than you have to make that decision a year ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're yeah. going to go to Africa and you're planning a year out or something, sure, you know, you're going to probably do that. But, uh, you know, I, I use vacation an awful lot to take a four-day weekend or something like that. And mm -hmm. my manager says, yeah, your work done? Go for it then, you yeah. know, kind of thing. So that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. But from yeah. like the budget, <coughs> the budget standpoint, Sean's saying like, how do we budget for this whole, you know, like 
don't know, I guess, their, does your vacation change in the new book? Is it, um, is it more or less? I mean, because like, I'm not going to cap mine. The, the budget is just the buyout, from my perspective. It's not whether you use it or not. Yeah. It's not if you're if you're continuing to be a full time employee, it, you're it's be not paid really same, a budget yeah. event, you're gonna be paid the same. It's if you left and right. we had to hire somebody the day you left. Right, right. Now we have your bank two hundred forty hours we'll pay you and we have to pay your replacement the day you left, right? So right. now we have we're double dipping for a month. Mm -hmm. right. And we you know that's a yeah that's the issue. Is, is all I'm saying. So it's just in other words we need as when we're talking about our three month Bu buffer here, we need to start throwing in money at, or budgeting for uh, paying transition. vacation out, mm -hmm. transition, mm -hmm. and just having that as a reserve. Yeah, just keep it there. Yeah, just keep it there. I just think that's prudent budgeting practices, mm -hmm. you know, and, and hopefully we won't have that problem very often, but at least when we do have the problem, we have the money in the budget for it. Mm -hmm. I, I have a fundamental math problem. Because since we're open from 8 to 4.30, which is eight and a half hours, and we shut down an hour for lunch, which is seven and a half hours, we're, but we're paying everybody eight hours. <laughs> I guess we're paying them for the break time that they're using around the... Yeah, that's because if okay. you don't, it's... Um, they're only working seven and a half, but we're paying them eight. Yeah, and that's because of how they're because doing the mandatory breaks. Mandatory break periods. The break periods, because if you don't take your break within, like, three hours of your lunch break or within three hours of the end of a four hour, you actually had to get paid for that 15 minutes. I'm a little bit worried about that. We should probably talk to the lawyer. We've had this discussion before in state government and you have no choice. You have, have to, to take the break. You cannot be paid for it because of what, what it, what's happened at the federal level in lawsuits. Yeah. And it's, it's we've had issues too at the county, but basically and uh, the, our unions flat out said, no, the ORS, ORS says you can't do it, so you can't do it. You have to take your first 15 minute break within one hour, or within, yeah, you have to start within one hour of your before your lunch break. So if I go to lunch at noon, I have to take that 15 minute break by 11 o'clock. Otherwise, I didn't take that break in the county. Yeah, I, we, we, we discussed it, yeah, discussed it and the lawyer this. said, it's, it's up to the employees if they want to have it. It's not side. up to the employees. There's federal. There's been federal lawsuits okay. that, have bought, that have knocked this down. Several okay, times. let me let me let me ask you this: if if that's a problem, if if you think that's a problem, because we've you know had this way for 20 years, um, and every employee here will tell you that they would rather have that time. Well, so would okay, I. Okay, okay, okay. But listen. Pay us for our lunch. We'll, I'll make sure they all get the 15-minute break whenever. we. If we have to go to the bathroom, I'm not going to say, you can't go to the bathroom, it's not your break time. I, I, no, I totally no, that's agree. not what we're well, I, I, I totally agree with that. I'm just saying, uh, once again, I'm reading the words here, and I'm applying them against actual practices. And if you read the words here, it, it says the district hours are 8 to 4.30, and we're going to close for lunch from 11.30 to 12.30. And on Friday, we're 8 to 4. So that's not 40 hours <laughs> that you're working, period. And then we, we fa factor everything else off a 40-hour work week. So I'm just reading the words. I'm not necessarily trying to argue the, poly the, the practice. I think the practice is fine. I just, but the words, yeah. I think I guess this could be good for us if somebody came and said, "Well, you owe me 40 hours of working." We said, "Well, no, we don't, because we only mandated that you worked for 36 hours every week. So we'll owe you 36 or something." I suppose if we really wanted to be jerks about it, we could enforce this to our favor because it's less than 40 hours the way this is described for our hours of operation. But it, again, all I'm doing is reading words and applying them to practice, which is what lawyers do when they make lawsuits and. It's in 40 hours. <laughs> Page 16. Let's just make it 40 hours. <laughs> if we want to, which would mean, I mean, are we paying for lunch and breaks or not? Well, we have to pay for the break, but we'll be paying for lunches and not, um, but we have to. Because the way they're doing breaks, we have to pay them for half an hour. Mm -hmm. No, no, breaks are paid for. That's yeah, a, that's a, that's a non-issue. Um, no, what the, the how they're using the breaks, we have to pay them a half an hour. 
So then I guess the way this is stated is fine except for Fridays. Mm -hmm. Because Friday's an hour short, or half an hour short. Because 8 to 4.30 is eight and a half hours. We're not paying them a half an hour for lunch. Mm -hmm. But we are paying them two times 15 for breaks. So that's eight hours. Mm -hmm. Eight and a half hour period, we're paying them eight. Right? Except on Fridays, it's a eight hour period. And we should only be paying them seven and a half. Yeah. I, that came about even before I was here. Oh, that was some hokey story about Janice having to go to the bank and that she had to close half an hour early. But going to the bank is work. She's working. You didn't know Janice. No. <laughs> she anyway. was unique. I'm just reading the words. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with you. Our goal here is clean the words. All I'm saying is that's how it came about. Mm -hmm. this, this really, you know, I'm reading this, I'm thinking, you know, the government employee, you know, works so break, breaks till lunch and goes home. I mean, one could read it that way, and it's, I mean, I'm not saying that that's happening, but. What maybe the way to, to solve do? this is just say, 8 a.m. to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Because then the math works. If somebody has to leave at 4 o'clock on a Friday, it's not that big a deal, right? I mean, that's just management, from my perspective. We're, I'm, we're not punching in and punching out. I mean, we're filling out time cards, and if you want to call BS on their time card, you can call BS on their time card, don't sign it, right? Okay. If somebody's abusing it, we'll, we'll solve it. That's We'll mm -hmm. solve it through management practices, but the math should be accurate. To make the math accurate, if we just say Monday through Friday, eight to four thirty Monday through Friday, and the office closed for lunch. This is an employee handbook, right? It's not a contract or anything. Why are we even saying what the hours are in here? Yeah, maybe we shouldn't even bother. We could delete it. Yeah, that's one. That's another way to do it, Jim. I mean, I could that's see true because it may change. It might change. Maybe mm -hmm. we we'll just take the whole thing out. Then, then it's. Then we don't just say it's an eight-hour day, and yeah, you work you work yeah. eight hours, forty hours a week, and don't confuse it with hours of operation. Okay, that does make more sense. Mm -hmm. And hours of operation is an operational thing, right? Yeah. You can publish that on the website. Here's the come pay your bill, and that can change happen. whenever. Does because yeah, that doesn't mean you're not working during that hour lunch period. Mm -hmm. You're working, you're working. Just it's confused by this when people start using this to define their math like I did, <laughs> then it doesn't all equal up. Okay. Okay, sorry, got us off the... No, that's a good... That's all I have. So, so <laughs> if we just say during business hours... Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Or delete the whole paragraph. I would delete the whole paragraph. Yeah, I would just, delete yeah, just take the whole paragraph oh, out. That's a lot cleaner. Okay. Sometimes less is more. Indeed. Okay. In 240 hours of vacation crew, we're all okay with that? Yeah, no. yeah. I didn't have a math problem for those. Yeah, it came from, yeah. yeah. Any other comments, Steve? Um, I want my birthday declared a federal holiday. <laughs> we ain't got enough time off in June. No time off in June. That's close. Okay, next Mine can mathematically never be on a, it's a November 20th. So I can't ever be the 21st. Oh, I yeah. can't be during the Thanksgiving holiday. Well, really, you know, we don't take it off on the time, you know. It it's doesn't have to be, I mean, you could cross that out and just put one floating holiday if you, or a personal day or something. However you want to do it. I like the idea of a personal day. Do it. Yeah, the state has, in the contract, you have two personal business days. You can use them yeah. whenever you want, as long as your manager authorizes it. Yeah. I get, what, 10 hours of personal time, which well, I use for this. Well, it makes sense. Banks are only open certain hours, whatever. You got to do personal business. Yeah. Um, I'll confess, I didn't read through the 
vehicle and technology and device this time around. But oh, we hatched that really good. Hatched so. that pretty good. So I think we'll probably be, if he goes in front. Of so do we put personal day instead of like employees' birthday? Yeah, I would. This sounds that more gives you, that Yeah, it also gives you more flexibility. Yeah, if we get a Jehovah's Witness. They don't. They don't celebrate, celebrate birthdays. Birthday. So personal holiday. No, it's, that's I don't like to celebrate mine anymore either, so. No, either. <laughs> <laughs> you get to a certain point, you declare your birthday a federal holiday. I thought you could start counting down. That'd be good. For a while. <laughs> get my red hair back. Yeah. Not backwards. All right, so uh, we got a half an hour to go through the finance report. So we're, I mean, do we, so do we need to? Uh, we have a couple things to fix. Are we gonna? Do we, do we want to vote in this manual with subject to some amendments? What do we want to do? Let's adjust and then review the new language. It, there's just. So 2020, editions. we will get this done. <laughs> After I retire. <laughs> let's let's aim to, to have it. this done at the next meeting. Next meeting, yeah. 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 Put it number one on the agenda. Get it done. Okay. Yeah, and they, I'll say this to myself, the pot calling the kettle black, that if you haven't made a comment about it in this edition, then forever hold your peace. Or your peas. <laughs> Yeah. I'm the one that Cause I'm directing that at. We way. gotta move it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, tab four, financial reports. <laughs> tab four. Okay. Uh, so there's the checks in the middle of the table. Are those circulating? And then the last section of checks, we're missing a. I okay, she initialed them. Okay. You signed them, but you didn't initial any of them. I guess I initialed some of them. Um, there, was really couple, there was a couple. I wasn't uh -huh. really expecting to come in to sign No, I know, I know. I was trying to get them out as soon as I could. Right. They have been sorry. sufficiently you. reviewed now. Yeah. Two of us. So tab four, um, nothing to note, everything to reconcile them. I noticed in the minutes that there was a large outstanding, well, outstanding checks. Sean made reference to that. Unclear balance. Unclear balance has that been resolved. It's a timing uh, thing. It's a timing thing. Um, so just like if the uh, last day of the month or something, uh, if we have a payroll and we have we've been putting our uh, tax payroll tax stuff. Um, it's not shouldn't be as big now, but if there was some big checks right at the end of the month. It reflects the bank statement, not really. Okay. It's it's not the only real unclear check that are sitting out there. I mean, we clear up the um, the unclaimed property for deposits, you know, and those are, should all be less than fifty dollars if there is any. But most of them are, you know, just the ones that are a few dollars. Why people don't cash the check? And it gets sent to the state at the end. Uh, like this time, the unclear. There's always going to be an unclear balance. This one is four thousand seven hundred ninety-eight. That's probably considerably lower than some of the times that we've seen it, up to fourteen, fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, all it takes is one big check. Yeah. But realistically, if we did the payroll, you know, that's three or four grand right there, just sitting out there. Mm -hmm. We didn't take the check to the bank right away. So I don't, I don't have anything to note in tab four unless you guys have other questions. I'm just wondering how Brian is very meticulous. Brian? He had 0.38 hours of sick time uh, yeah. on the 19th of February. So his <laughs> sick time is accruing like at a different the rate. rate. I just think. And uh, it was an interesting number. Yeah, yeah. Went through it. I think that he just he had a little thing with his family, and he was like 20 minutes, so we just made yeah. it round it, cut it to like mm -hmm. an even number. 2.8 minutes. It's <laughs> close. I, I think we're probably. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll survive that one. Yeah, so he just needs like one hour of sick leave now every month. Yeah. yeah. So five days a year for the state. 
Alright, uh, tab 6. Alright, uh, so the balance sheet um, was done on the 23rd, so that's a, that's a week before the end of the month. So that's why you can see the, the state uh, payroll tax accrual and the liabilities were, since we're paying our federal weekly, should never see anything there anymore. We pay it as soon as we accrue it. Um, but we did pay that and that check is in the, the batch for the state with one additional week on there. Nothing else of note there. Transferred 102,983 of the 120,000, so we'll be doing another transfer after the April billing. So I think that we shouldn't have any problem getting to that 120,000 that we had budgeted, but not if any more. Not if any more, no. The auditor. Five dollars or a penny more. <laughs> <laughs> the auditor will we'll write us up for fat. We'll pass the hat around next board meeting. <laughs> I jumped to tab six, but tab five, uh, you can see all the transfers that we did during the month. It's a lot of action in there, mostly just uh, reimbursing the district out of the SEC and capital improvement fund for invoices paid towards the emergency generators. And we moved a little money around for working capital. We transferred 20,000 last month to the non-restricted and we ended up moving it back within two installments this month just to get us through. That's a pretty small gap, unless you have questions. Just make sure the notebooks are circulating signatures. I think you did that too, sure. Sure. That one next, that one right there. there you go. Yeah, yeah, just to see if that one's getting signed. We haven't signed that, I don't think. Okay, so that is the bank statements and the budget versus actual. Um, we have a motion to approve the financial report. So moved. Second. Move and second to approve the finance report. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, how about paying the bills? I move we pay the bills. So move, second, sorry. Move and second that we pay the bills. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Tab seven, district report. Well, been through part of it. Um, <coughs> We are at the end of the February billing or getting close to it. Does anybody have any questions on what we've written so far? We have started on the budget, went through the whole um, book, and as far as line items and where we're going to get at, um, but it's been a it's been a difficult month trying to do that with sickness and, and also a couple conferences but we're working on that and we looked at how we we're going to end with putting um, Ryan on two days a week and then going to five for it would it'd be just like what we were doing for um, the intern and um, the projected ending is uh, 
down here will either be below or just a sh shade over. And so we'll know closer to the end if we have to do a transfer into personal for his work. And then we kind of were unclear on what you guys wanted and Dan wasn't here last time on the financial analysis as for far. Brian yeah well I, we just want I, I think the proposal was made to bring him on as a, in a year long employee right as a the proposal was to um, have him work as an intern or, and then in September decide what you wanted to do if you wanted to keep them on, you know, full time. I think all we were talking about was that we need some budgetary enabling for that decision to happen in September. Mm -hmm. If we decide to keep them on, then we just need to have the money to pay them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the financial analysis. Can that be reflected in the budget that our salary expense might have to increase starting in September? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all we were talking about. Yeah, right. That's all I remember. And, and doesn't mean we're committing to hiring them in September. We'll make that decision then, but we can't decide to do it if we don't have the money. Yeah, to we pay need him. to know if we got the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what all. if we don't? If we don't have the money to pay him, I don't think we can hire him. No, and it's not a comment on his skills or ability. It's a it's a financial reality. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be a prudent decision to hire a guy that we don't have money to pay him. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's not. It's not a personal judgment against Brian. It's, no, it's that we don't have <coughs> the money. So we got to have the money. I and we got we to put it in the budget. That's I understand all. that. Um, he is on the preferred worker program. Okay. If you know that. Yeah. And for the first six, was it six months, Dan? Six months, I think. Or so we get a wage subsidy out of DCBS for him, which mm -hmm. is nice. We should reflect that. That's why I think that's why we talked about the financial analysis. So how much is that? How much can we get from the state to subsidize his salary based on his preferred worker status against how much would we pay him if we hired him in September? We've already budgeted for the internship, right? Right. We didn't budget at sixteen bucks we an hour. We didn't budget at sixteen. So we're gonna so we're under a little bit where we need to be. Now the question is, can we take them on full time in September through, you know, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, 10 mm -hmm. months, right? Some, so some partially budgeted for, some not. But we did a semi one and maybe okay. if it's explanatory. Pretty easy to get back, but what would we be proposing to bring him on as of September? Two, three, or five days a week. You know? I was thinking we were talking five days. I thought so too. That's how I read it in the. Uh, yeah, I thought we were talking full time employment. Yeah. yeah. September. So. No, it was a quick benefit. So that's the financial analysis we're talking about. Yeah. Add a benefit okay. load, right. deferred compensation, right. and all the things that we need to put in there, right. plus his hourly proposed hourly wage, right. times 40 hours a week, times the number of weeks we're going to have him yeah, right. put down the budget. I wouldn't mind seeing one with what, 10 months versus 12 months. Yeah. I mean, what's two more months? Why not just bring them on and stop, you know, not play games versus... Yeah, I mean, well, that's a good question. I don't know. What, what's the strategy in September? Why would it be September to bring them on? Well, it's because that's the normal time that we'd have the intern through. Why don't we just say not have an intern and just bring them on? July 1? July 1. Yeah, let's... 
if we do it, let's talk, let's see what the. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't have benefits incorporated into it. It uh, does in the back. Last line. Uh, oh, I see. So this goes adds up all of these. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah, I would say if we're going to do it, let's just do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking two months. And especially during a high demand period, period when mm -hmm. all this building is going on. So, so let me understand the, this document. Here. So we, in fifteen sixteen, which expires June thirtieth, we budgeted thirteen thousand eight sixty for an intern. That's what Correct. You're okay. And then if we bring them on full time, actually fourteen nine twenty, almost fifteen thousand. Oh, I see. We're including the taxes. Okay, mm -hmm. so fifteen grand. And so, to bring them on, are we talking five days a week, DJ, or through, what are we talking about? starting September or, or July 1? What, what would we want to bring in? Well, if you, you can look at three days a week or five days a week. Okay, this is July 1. This Up is here, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so, okay. So, so, it would cost. So, it's 50 grand a year, or if we do it five days a week. Yeah. Which is a delta of 35. So we have to come up with an additional 35, roughly, in the budget for payroll, personnel expenses, what we call it, right? Mm -hmm. Cost of that employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's only if you do employee only health care. He does, and, and he has family. He does have family, so. and um, they do have their own plan, which he could opt out, and I know everybody said, well, double coverage, whatever, but um, if it's his option that they'd rather just be paid what their family plan is instead and opting out of the district, it would be less than that. We should budget for a family plan. That's right. Yeah. Because he's that's only fair. Yeah. Everybody should be. Yep. Yeah. So we should have, the, should money have the option. Yeah. If he opts out, then that's fine. But yeah. Um, well, then you so it's going to be more than that for the health care piece, right? Then you add 84, 84 twice. So, so it's 57 grand, roughly, minus 15. Right, so we get 30, 33, 32, 33,000, either no, 38,000, an additional salary expense. And that's all we're. That's all I'm saying from my previous comments last meeting. Is do we have the money to bring them on? And I don't have any problem bringing them on as long as we pay for them. Mm -hmm. And if we can budget for an additional thirty-eight thousand dollars in personal expenses through the budget cycle, if we can move money around to make that reality, then sure, we should we we should hire them. That's all. Yeah, I totally agree with agreement with that. I mean, it's it's a math problem. It's not really all that challenging. Yeah, and this mm -hmm. is good math. Well, our pers percentage raise what we've looked at for the eight percent we just have estimated that it bring fifty one thousand in. So if you did nothing else you would be just covering him basically yeah. with the eight percent raise. If and that's iffy. There are places we can you know, move some mm -hmm. things around. Uh, you know, and I know it's down to the dollar part, but there is, this district has uh, plans with like the cross connection program and everything else. Really a lot of work that we don't have the, the manpower for. Mm -hmm. No, I get it. I don't think anybody's arguing the, the idea of hiring Brian. I don't, that's the, I don't, you're not getting any argument from people. No, no, no. We're just no. trying to make it happen through mm -hmm. a budget process. Yeah. Making all. sure that the money is there. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, I mean, we're having more work. Development's increasing even mm -hmm. in our district. Now, you, I don't know if you noticed that the property next to my house is for sale. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, if they annex into the city, that's three houses right there. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. the, the, there's partition plots popping all up over in our district, so mm -hmm. our customer face is growing. And there's the potential of some really big stuff. Yeah. What? Well, I mean, you look down on Pilkington, the Korean church. Oh, yeah. And then the mm -hmm. property 
back at the corner of Red Leaf. Mm -hmm. and those are all potentially developable or redevelopable. Mm -hmm. And that would be a big chunk of housing. I mean, you, hypothetically speaking, if you go look at my neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, where everywhere you, you see one lot, there could be two houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on in. Yeah. I wonder what a leak. Excuse me. Uh, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we have a leak of meter boxes full of water. And when I reported before, I was told they said well, it was probably a spring because it's on a hill. So I clean all the vegetation out around the box. You got some pictures here. Um, and it's clearly dry above the box. The box is completely full of water. And it's running down in front of our mailbox for eroding the roadbed there. And it's going across Child's Road in two different places. Oh it's going across the road. Okay. So anyway, so. And, I, and, and other people have reported it too. I know my neighbors have reported it called it in here. Okay. So, like so yeah, thank you. So, can you chat real quick? We're just going to finish up a board meeting okay. here if we, if we can by nine. Are we? Okay. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And it's. So, I, I think. Well, oh, we just need to reflect this in the budget. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's just look at the budget and see how that yeah. plugs in. I'm getting 42633 is yeah. the math based on uh, an additional expense, salary expense, that we need to figure out in the yeah. budget. And, and if we get that through rate increase, great. Yeah. You know, well, however we get there. Yeah, so, just show us how we get there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just show, just show us how we get there. That's all. Make sure that that's... We're not saying no. Just show us how to pay for it. Yep. Oh. Okay. Like options or just one way? Oh, well, you guys are the budget officers, so, so I think we need to out. make a recommendation to the budget committee. They don't need to know the details of well, how many employees. I have a question are. then, because there, there's obviously some monies that that we already have our eye on that we know can move around with having that extra yep. person. Um, but then, for instance, DJ was saying, okay, it could be funded by the rate increase, but that's not what the rate increase was intended for. Ooh. So that's pulling money away from what was budgeted for projects, and then we're creating the problem well, that you've got the three right. options show us what the three are and let us yeah. pick yeah that's yeah. fine and, and i think the we could probably make an argument uh -huh. that the rate increase is intended to position us to build surplus was the primary intent but also to fund growth of the district i think those are really the two intents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so growth of the district is part of the justification for, for a new employee, yeah. employee. Yeah. so i think we could probably make that leap as long as we just don't completely erode the surplus, right? Which is the you know the other intent of mm -hmm. the rate increase. So we can't go in front of our rate payers and say, "Oh, sorry, thanks for paying us more. We decided to hire an extra guy, and we're not building any surplus." That would not be financially responsible. Sure. But we're still building surplus. Maybe not as much as we had hoped, but we're preparing for growth because with growth comes more revenue anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. the two offset each other. It's basically, it's. We're spending money in the hopes that we're going to be made. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and if you spot two or three other ways we could do it, let us know what they are. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's all we're asking. Yeah. 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 But, but this is good analysis. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just think we just now have a number that we need to figure out how to put in the payroll, and then where the where it moves from to get there. One of the you know one thing like I think that's good about Brian is that uh, you know Rick really likes working with him too so it's like if he he can gain knowledge by having that time working with rick yep. that's a benefit to the district but even yeah. if rick retires yeah. down the line yeah well, then we got backup we're we'll still need another employee yeah because but of, we'll have because one of, trained right because yeah. of the cross connection program that mm -hmm. i mean no. that's looking almost like uh, again i don't think anybody's arguing the concept or the person that you know that he's the right guy or that we should do it it's just a matter of can we make it happen? You don't want to hire him and get part way through the year and discover there's no money to pay him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what that's we're trying to avoid. Yeah. The, yeah. And the other thing, like, because you guys, she proposed the part-time and the full-time or whatever. And I think we have to try to figure out how to make it full-time. Otherwise, 
He's going to find mm -hmm. full time work. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's got a family to take care of. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't think any of us are thinking he needs to be part time. Yeah. 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 Just, I like John's point. Show us how to get there. Give sure. us a couple yeah, options. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Get to get us there. Okay. Well, it'll have to be pretty much concreted before next meeting because, and so we yeah. got to get on the budget and figure it out. But yeah, next month is April, isn't it? And and I. Um, but do you remember when we first came, Rick was part time plus mm -hmm. we had Jim and you know so we had four employees. You know we never fully replaced Jim, and so we've been working at a deficit. You know For since a long time. since the, yeah. and trying to get through. You know with the interns, you know, picking up the slack in the middle, you know. You know, and that worked better when we weren't having so much growth and we didn't have so many things to do. Yeah. But, but it doesn't work now. No. Okay. There's more complexity now. Yeah. All right, we're running out of time, so let's let's yeah. finish the district report. Is anything else to it? The only yeah. thing else yeah. is yeah. that um, I need to find out if this is okay. Uh, Rick and I and Brian won the Pop Ops contest. Congrats. Yeah. The, yeah, congratulations. So the it's not okay that you won? No. No, okay. <laughs> no it goes on to section, which is in Boise, and um, we want to go participate. The, sex, or the uh, subsection gives us $150 each, and so I need to either register us or not. I got a tent. I got a brand and, uh, how's your, Is your right thumb good? It's 84 that um, the hitchhiker's old. You know, there is, there is money in the budget for it. Uh, we just, our current program, if it's out of state, which it is out of state, I have to bring it before the board. And, so, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yep. The thing well, is, is we well, have to have Bruce to take Brian's place to get us all three out of here. That's you're, why it, you're only allowed to go if you win. Huh? You're only allowed to go if you win. So you better win. Oh, if you I don't, don't win, know. You have to I don't uh, think that's <laughs> a, you don't win, I, that's a qualification. If you don't win while you're there, you have to reimburse the district. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if they win, then you just go and win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just go. Just go. Make a cry. I like the little, I like the little gold medallions that come with it, so we hang it on the wall. Well, we, we would have had the we would have had the trophy here to hang, but the guy the section where they have their um, uh, engraving done, the guy was moving his shop from an office to his home, so he didn't have it done. So I was going to show that. So that's what we're going to do. That wall. That's yeah, the trophy wall. wall. And those will be flat. Yeah. And Perfect. Okay. All right, we're done. All right, well, I think we're done. Let's adjourn the meeting at 8.59. Excellent. Well there we go. Yeah. Off to Salem. Yeah, have a fun drive. Board of Ag this week, so oh. we've got a busy week. One question. Uh, why the date of the budget proposed budget meeting is May 19th. Is that a problem with anybody? As far as it's I know a right now. Thursday. As far as, yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah, right now I don't know. Right now, that, that don't, it doesn't ring in any bells in my head, though, any alarms. So. May 19th. So Thursday. I can do Thursday. Yeah, we're going to do that. 5.30 p.m. Baseball is the only, and I don't have a baseball schedule yet, so. So, I mean, there's high likelihood that I could have a game. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're done.